We turn now to a primetime live hidden camera investigation in health clubs. As you were hitting the gym following up on that New Year's resolution, so were we with our cameras and test kits looking for germs. We discovered something unexpected and it could make you sick. Ah! Come on! It's the New Year's rush at health clubs all over the country. Every January, there can be twice as many people working out as usual. They're looking for bigger arms, massive chests, firmer, everything. And they could get all that along with a lot of something they don't want, germs. We sent some of our primetime staffers for a workout with something special in their gym bags. A testing kit. They're doing an undercover investigation, swabbing everything in sight. The machines, the free weights, the exercise areas, the locker rooms, even the showers, especially the showers. What are the concerns that are expressed to you by new members? Cleanliness, uh, first and foremost. Jeff Bodar runs the New York Health and Racket Club, one place we did not test. His gym makes sure there are spray bottles with disinfectant on every exercise floor. If you run a dirty gym, you're not gonna have customers. Simple as that. They wanna see cleaners cleaning. They wanna walk through the bathrooms. They wanna see it, they wanna touch it, they wanna smell. It's a lot better if you're working out and you come into the locker room and it's fresh, it's clean. You don't have to worry about anything dirty. <laughs> Spend a lot of time here, you get a little very sweaty. You don't want to share sweat with everybody in the club. <laughs> Your skin is covered with millions and millions of germs. So think about it. When you sweat, they come pouring off. But germs in gyms are not exactly a priority for health authorities. For example, in New York and Los Angeles, a health department will come to a gym about once a year. But even then, they're usually looking at pools for proper chlorine and filtration levels. Unless there is a specific complaint, no one comes out to inspect health clubs for germs. Maybe they should. The gym is an unusually effective place for the transmission of germs. Yes. Microbiologist Dr. Philip Tierno wrote the book on germs, and he says all those people, yeah! all that exposed skin, and all that sweat can become a perfect storm for spreading infections. You are not using that one machine exclusively for yourself. You're leaving that machine and someone else follows you and your germs that you leave behind. And can you really pick up germs from a machine that simply? Yes, you can. 80% of all infectious disease is transmitted by contact. It's as simple as that. A sick person uses a machine. I then use it next, touch the same hand rest, and then touch my eye. I can get sick. You can. By the time the 50th person uses that machine, there may be potential pathogens there. So what would our testers find, and where would they find it? What areas of the gyms would be the worst? We sent our samples to Dr. Tierno's lab at New York University Hospital. So you got a lot of nice, heavy growth. Our swabs came out of the tubes and into Petri dishes to see if anything would grow. A few days later, well, put it this way, if only our muscles grew as well. This is a typical Staph aureus, Plebsiella, Entrobacter, and E. coli. This is a typical bacillus organism. Germs and gyms? We found them practically everywhere we looked. What are the high-risk areas in the gym? Any article that is used by multiple people in quick sequence, such as dumbbells, seats where people may bike or where people may sit down to lift weights. And we didn't even think to check one place Dr. Tierno says we should have. You'd think carpet would be a plus in a health club. Tierno says it's only nice if you're a germ. Carpets are the uh, most foolish thing I see in a gym. Carpet should not be even in a home. They're reservoirs of germs.
So carpet is Carpets a germ sponge. Bad. Germ sponge. Absolutely. A reservoir of germs. Bad idea. As for what we did check, here are some examples. A lateral pull-down machine. Bacillus comes from the soil, so it was obviously on someone's shoes. An exercise bike took lots of germs for a ride, including candida. Any woman who's experienced yeast infections knows this one. And on the dumbbells, E. coli? E. coli is the most common bacteria found in human feces, and it was the most common germ found in our tests. So you found evidence of feces in places that have nothing to do with the lavatory at the gym. How is that E. coli getting around? Unfortunately, we as humans are bathed in our microorganisms. The worst place of all, the shower floor. This 13 is from the shower. If I go in the shower after somebody else, are there a lot of germs there, or is that a little bit of a myth? No, unfortunately, germs do survive in the shower, on walls and on the floor. Now, are you going to let me know that you didn't really find that much, so it's not that big a deal? Or did you, like, find it in amounts that I'm not going to want to hear? I found it in hordes, unbelievable quantities. We use the word innumerable, innumerable. It is a sickening image, but according to Dr. Tierno, E. coli, like most of what we found, won't necessarily make you sick. You just don't want that stuff on you, you know, in the first place. I don't want to be walking around in somebody else's funk. You wear your to. little slippers and uh, you're okay. But just as easily as those non-pathogenic germs touch those surfaces, we can have more pathogenic forms touch them. That's the point. As we continue, there's one more kind of germ we found in our hidden camera investigation. But before we tell you about it, listen to a story about a young man in the prime of his life. Ricky Linetti was the picture of health, a big, strong college football player. He had just led his team to a major victory, catching more passes than anyone, securing a spot in the national semifinals. But sometime after that game, Ricky caught something else and by the weekend, he couldn't play in the next round. He was dead. He laid on the bed and just started throwing up blood. Right as soon as they got him into the emergency room. He was breathing like, like, he wasn't breathing right. And uh, I said, ah, something's going on. Something real bad is going on. They didn't know what they had. They were as confused as I was. Well, his blood pressure and everything just kept dropping. It was just, it was like one organ Cold. after another. Right. So his kidneys went, mm -hmm. then his heart was starting to go. Every kind of organ specialist was there, pretty much throwing up their hands, really did not know. There's still a lot of mystery surrounding how Ricky got sick in the first place and why his illness progressed so quickly. But one thing is clear. He had an infection caused by a bacteria generally found on the skin or in the nose called MRSA short for methicillin-resistant Staphylococcus aureus. This particular strain was from a medicine ball. We found the same bacteria on a medicine ball at a swanky gym in New York City. Why is this germ worse than all the other things you found there? This strain of Staph possesses enzymes that kill the white cells, your very defense, and allow the infection to proceed. MRSA is the type of germ doctors have been worried about for years. Call it a superbug, the type of germ the usual antibiotics can't kill. And MRSA doesn't give doctors a lot of time either. What starts off as a skin infection can become a deadly pneumonia or a blood or bone infection if not treated correctly and quickly. We've never seen MRSA infections in healthy children before. Uh, MRSA is usually the denizen of the hospital. It lives here. Dr. Richard Daum of University of Chicago Hospital says now 65% of the staph infections he sees in otherwise healthy kids are MRSA, drug resistant. It used to be none. How would you characterize that rate of growth? Uh, alarming, fast, concerning. When you say MRSA, you're talking about 15, 20, or 30 different antibiotics that the organism is resistant to. 
We went to the lab with Dr. Daum to see what makes MRSA a threat. When you see these clear areas around these different antibiotics, that means the antibiotic has been effective in killing the germs. Correct. If you see this, you know that all the penicillins and all the cephalosporins won't work. This so is MRSA. This is MRSA. This yeah. is resistant and there's no, because there's no circle around the antibiotic. Correct. There's no killing at all. That puts a tremendous pressure from a doctor's point of view on a very small number of compounds that are still able to kill MRSA organisms. So if you're a doctor outside the hospital, you may not know what you're dealing with. You'll give a regular antibiotic and you're actually making the situation worse? Well, that's exactly right. And we've seen a lot of kids who've come in here and needed intensive care and, in fact, have died that have started off by being out in the community where they got an old treatment and then come in here having failed it. For most people, infection begins with a cut or a bruise, which is why it's not surprising some of the worst MRSA outbreaks have happened in sports, especially football. I think you'd be hard-pressed right now to find a, a college uh, athletic department that has not seen it in some shape or form with some of their athletes. Ron Corson is the athletic trainer for the University of Georgia football team. Eight players had MRSA infections this season. So you have athletes come in contact with other athletes that have the potential to, to spread something from that standpoint. Many times you may have a, a communal locker room where you have a high congregation of people in one area. You may have athletes sharing equipment, such as passing a towel from one person to the next person on the sideline, and all those lead to uh, areas where you can potentially get a bacteria spread. Kenyatta Walker, one Even the NFL has had its share of problems. Players such as Kenyatta Walker of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and Junior Seau and Charles Rogers of the Miami Dolphins reportedly have been hospitalized with serious MRSA infections. But the biggest concern, according to Dr. Daum, is if MRSA continues to evolve, becoming even more resistant, largely because of the overuse of antibiotics. How fast can MRSA change and adapt? Bacteria are unlike us humans. Uh, we have a generation time of about 25 years. They have a generation time of 20 minutes. 20 minutes? Yeah. They can adapt pretty fast. Um, so you're saying literally within a day or so, they can, bacteria can change and become resistant to a medicine? Certainly. It can live in your nose and just mind its own business, or it can cause a very aggressive disease and everything in between. He's already seeing a strain in his part of the country that he says is so severe, it's caused deaths even when the right antibiotic is used. As for that MRSA we found on the medicine ball, we don't know if anyone got sick from it. We just know it was there. Is this the gym's fault or is this just the nature of what a gym is? It's just a, a consequence of too many people touching the same thing too often. Can't be avoided. It's hard to avoid, very hard. So what does this all mean to you the next time you go to work out? How many of us have had an athlete come in with something like this? Ron um, Corson and his fellow yes, athletic trainers have some precautions for you well. to take. Just this week, they held a workshop to discuss ways to keep their own locker rooms as germ-free as possible. Don't share towels or wipe your face with a towel you use on equipment. Don't ignore skin infections that won't heal. Shower after a workout. Use liquid soap, not bars others may have used. And wash your hands, but do it right. To kill germs, you must wash under your nails and rub thoroughly for 20 to 30 seconds. Hopefully, prevention and awareness will stop the spread of MRSA. If so, that would at least be some comfort to Ricky Lanetti's family. His mother still went to that playoff game her son was so looking forward to. His number, 19, was everywhere, except on the field playing. It can happen. It can happen to anybody, you know, no matter how strong or healthy. Remember, most of the time, MRSA only causes a skin infection and can still be treated with some antibiotics. Serious illness from MRSA or other gym germs is rare.